This is the man who is in charge of the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. His name is Abdul Ghani Baradar, and he is likely to be the next president. The extremist group is trying to rebrand by releasing photos of members riding bumper cars and eating ice cream. But some videos show another side, like this one, where a fighter fires shots to control the crowd near Kabul airport. We decoded some of the most striking images of the Taliban takeover and what it could mean for the future of the country. This video of fighters taking control of the compound for the country's intelligence services was one of the first that went viral. They breezed past metal detectors of Afghanistan's police headquarters in Kunduz. Then they stole pickup trucks from the garage, the Kunduz police logo clearly visible on their new vehicles. By the end of July, the Taliban had gained control of about half of the country's districts. This satellite footage shows Afghan forces launching air attacks to defend the second biggest city in August. But the Taliban seized Kandahar, their former stronghold. This video shows people piling on top of a U.S. Humvee as they parade victoriously through the streets. We can even see some children in the back. Huge crowds also gathered at the city's gate, right outside the governor's office, as fighters replaced the Afghan flag with the Taliban's. Both flags feature the Shahada, a religious oath commonly found in most Muslim households. It reads, I bear witness that none deserves worship except God, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. The tricolor on Afghanistan's flag dates back to 1928, and represents the country's troubled past, the fight for independence, and its hope for an Islamic future. The emblem at the center features a mosque surrounded by sheaves of wheat for fertility. But the Taliban flag bleaches all of it, leaving just the Shahada, a symbol of the group's mission to re-establish an Islamic emirate in Afghanistan. Most emirates have a monarch in charge, but the Taliban chose this name because that's what they called it in the past. The Taliban flag was flying high in Herat too, when they took over the city that same day. Fighters shared videos of themselves walking through the city's citadel that dates back to Alexander the Great. You can see the green police trucks that appear to be similar to the ones in the Kunduz police headquarters. Here you can also see them patrolling the streets without any police officers to stop them. As news of the Taliban takeover began spreading across the country, pro-government soldiers tried to flee to Uzbekistan, using the same friendship bridge that the Soviets used after their defeat back in 1989. Then the Taliban drove into the capital, their flag at the front of the armored vehicle. That's when chaos began as many rushed into Kabul's airport. All these people were hoping to make it on one of the few flights leaving that day. Dozens piled onto the stairs, hoping to get inside a plane. And this might be the video we remember the most at the end of America's longest running war. A US Air Force jet races to leave Afghanistan in the middle of a tarmac packed with hundreds of civilians. This kind of C-17 aircraft is used by countries around the world to move troops, cargo, and sometimes people in danger. They're supposed to be an example of American military might. But instead, these images became a symbol of how the US has failed in this region. Here you can see people holding on to the sides of the plane, just trying to get in. And this shocking video shows the moment when someone fell after the flight took off. Among the people killed was 17-year-old Zaki Anwari a soccer player for the Afghan national team. The lucky ones, at least 600 people seen here, landed safely in Qatar, relieved to be out of Kabul. That same night, the now former president Ashraf Ghani also left the country, leaving the Taliban in charge. After that, we saw stunning moments like this one, the presidential palace taken over by the Taliban. Elsewhere in the building, Taliban members, along with their many weapons, filled conference rooms, once occupied by top government officials. And this video shows the very end of the Afghan civilian government. 
Fighters unhook the Afghan national flag, they roll it up, and they set it aside. In the middle of all the chaos, the Taliban hosted their first press conference, led by the group's spokesperson, Zabiullah Mujahid. And now, after months of waging a military campaign, we're seeing a different side of the Taliban through carefully crafted social media images released by the group. Fighters pose for the camera with their ice creams. One video shows them driving around in bumper cars, their guns also along for the ride. In another video, some of them ride a merry-go-round at an amusement park in Kabul. And back in the palace, a few Taliban fighters hit the gym as they take a break from carrying their weapons. All of these surreal scenes are an attempt to show the more human side of the Taliban. But some of the videos are a reminder of the Taliban's oppressive past, as they gathered all the ammo, bulletproof vests and guns civilians have in their homes. Now they're releasing propaganda videos mocking Washington for its defeat. As fighters dress up in the billions of dollars worth of weapons and gear the U.S. left behind for the Afghan military. They're calling themselves the Badri 313 Brigade. The name refers to the Battle of Badr, where Prophet Muhammad led a victorious army of 313 men. These videos are produced by the Taliban's media unit, called Manba al-Jihad, which means Source of Jihad. It's run by the Haqqani Network, an insurgent group now also part of the Taliban. The logo seems to copy the style of Al Jazeera and some ISIS channels. This one shows a fighter with an assault rifle and a bulletproof vest. A huge contrast from their old look with just a rifle at hand. Here you can see them wearing American ballistic vests and M4 assault rifles. At the center of the parade, the Taliban flag is flying high. And people have even started selling the Taliban flag on the streets of Kabul. But others refuse to give up. Some soldiers from the Afghan military are joining a resistance movement in Panjshir Valley. They are rallying behind Ahmad Massoud, the son of the famous Afghan military leader who fought against the Soviets. People in Kabul are also protesting the takeover with the Afghan flag as their symbol of resistance. That was also what protesters in Jalalabad were holding on to before Taliban militants fired into the crowd. But a lot of people in Afghanistan are showing that they're desperate to escape the Taliban, as they keep searching for a way out, even if it's just their babies who make it to safety.